God welcomes all strangers and friends. God's love is strong and it never ends. God welcomes all strangers and friends. God's love is strong and it never ends. God welcomes all strangers. Good morning. Welcome to Redeemer Online. We're so glad, glad that you are joining us this morning or afternoon or whatever time of day it is for you right now. We haven't been doing announcements, so we thought we would today just for a couple reasons. One, it's Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day to everyone at home who is a mother in any way, shape, or form. Some people have mothered even without biological children whether they're adopted children or people that you claim as your own. We also recognize today is a hard day for some people who desire to be mothers and can't, people who maybe don't have a, their best relationship with their mother or people who have lost a mother this year. So please know that you are loved and that we are thinking of you today and that we celebrate you as you are. We also have lots of offerings this week and the coming weeks we're doing Zoom opportunities for men's breakfast and women's breakfast. There's the weekly Bible study, and all of that can be found in an e-news that's going to start coming out on Sunday. So if you have anything for the e-news, make sure to get that in before Sunday afternoon. And this week, we are going to start doing a Tuesday evening at 6.30 service. It's going to be brief, 30 minutes or less, but a little bit more somber healing, prayerful service, if you will, for this time as we continue through pandemic together and continue to just discern how are we the church and creating new ministry in this day and age. So look out for information about that, but otherwise we'll see you again on Tuesday at 6.30. For now, let us prepare our hearts for worship, and we're going to begin with confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, 
I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We'd like to invite all the children who are at home to come forward to the TV or to the device and to come and join us right now for the children's message. And if you're at home and you wanted to give a little special gift for the pickle jar to Tri-County Family Ministries, you can go to their website and help them as they're uh, doing their uh, doing their ministry well uh, right now in our community and really helping folks out. So, big question for today, and maybe I'll give you a couple seconds at home Uh, Didn't give you any time to think about it, but the question for this morning is, I'd like to see a sign, a picture, an image of God's love. God's love. So you had some homework. Did Mm -hmm. you do anything? I did. I did my homework. I did. I struggled, but I got it. you want to go first this time? Ooh. You, ooh, yeah. I always make you go first. first. That's right. You go first. This time. So I got this off the wall in my office. Full disclosure, he asked us to draw a picture, and I got nervous. No one drew. <laughs> so <laughs> I got this. And someone gave this to me. Pastor Eric Childers and his family gave this to me for ordination. And there's a lot theologically going on, but ultimately, I think of God the provider. And you see the dove, which is really the spirit, but... God provides for us the things that we need. So I think that that's our loving God gives us what we need to get through. So that's kind of what I will keep Mm. it at that. Cool picture. Very cool. I like like that. that. Okay. So I made this as a representation of God's love. This is the sun. Okay. When did you make this? Um, At... I don't know, like a, well, like a, probably an hour it, ago at this point. Oh, you Maybe actually you made it today? Yeah, I made it today. Oh, this is awesome. Yeah, I made okay, it today. Too. I didn't know if this was hanging in your office. No. I, <laughs> was, I went to Chick-fil-A instead of drawing. <laughs> and I had noon Bible study. Okay, but everything on here has a, has a reason. So like there are all these things hanging off because God's love is like, 
kind of like tentacles that goes everywhere in unexpected places and it looks unexpected. So there's no, there's nothing you can predict about how God's love looks except that it'll be there. And then it's soft like this cottony stuff and sparkly. Um, and then there's this feather here, which I just really liked because God made creation and I love creation. And here's a blue rock for water and paper clips because God's love is strong and connects us. Wow. And there's staples too. She took it seriously. Deacon like, Katie this wins. It's really good. It's really, <laughs> well, let's just go home. All right. Well, you're already home. All right. There you go. Yeah, that's very, very cool. <laughs> very cool. Um, anyway. So I guess my turn, huh? Yeah, you can go. All right. So a couple ways. At first, I always see God's love. I, I wear this a lot. I did. This is a cross, but it has a Luther rose in the middle. So it, um, it's, it's Martin Luther's symbol to kind of remind him of, of who God is through Jesus. And there's a heart in the middle. And it always reminds me that I'm always at God's heart. And, and we're always at God's heart. That Jesus does everything uh, for us out of love. And so that's a really beautiful way of seeing God's love. The other thing I was thinking about, and sometimes we don't always talk about, mm. is, is the Bible. So... Yeah, you're saying a picture of God's love, but where are the pictures? There's just a bunch of, just a bunch of words. But this, the, the passage this morning is the disciples wanting to see God. They, they, they say to Jesus, they say, just show us God the Father. Just show us the Father and we will be satisfied. And Jesus says, if you've seen me, so I see that in the stories here. If you've seen Jesus, then you've seen God. And then he goes further. So we read these stories about God's love in here. But the beautiful thing that it says to us this morning is that because God's spirit lives within us, Deacon Katie and Pastor Megan and Darren and all of you at home, me included, we get to do amazing things. And when we do amazing, wonderful, loving things for other people and take care of other people, guess who people see? They see Jesus. And they see God through us. So we actually get to be love. So we have beautiful images, which are homemade <laughs> images. The other thing I should say is that God's love is messy. It's a messy love. <laughs> it's a, messy. Which is good because it's perfect for us. And, it cannot be contained. And an image of this, of, of this yeah. God that provides for us at all times. It feeds mm -hmm. us an, an image of Jesus. And also this idea that, guess what? You get to be Jesus' love. When people see you, they might just see God's love. And I think that is so exciting right now. So that wherever you may go during this tough time, God's love is working through you. Let that be our message this morning. May God work through you. May you be the sign of God's love for others. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. The first reading is from the seventh chapter of Acts. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man called Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. He then knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Into your hands, O Lord, I command my spirit. 
Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe, for you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me, for you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. Into your hands, O Lord, I command my spirit. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Into your hands, O Lord, I command my spirit. The second reading comes from 1 Peter. Like newborn infants long for pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have mercy. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? 
Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, The one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And in fact, they will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Sometimes when I would travel to the Midlands, back when we still could travel, I would, without a doubt, always run into someone I knew. Someone from my past, maybe someone from seminary, a a local pastor friend, or maybe even a long-lost relative. When your mom's last name, maiden name, was Ruth, and her mother's name was Wingard, you knew everybody in Lexington County, and you're related to everybody. And the funny thing is, when I would see people, the comments and compliments would come in very similar to this. They would say, Ryan, you are looking so much like your dad nowadays, except your dad still has hair. Or they would say, oh, the way you said that, I didn't think you had an accent, but I hear a little bit of Lexington County in there, a little bit of your mom in that. Or recently, I've heard some people say comments that really touched my heart as well of two of my uncles, my two uncles who have passed away in the past decade. One is my Uncle Mike, and people will say, boy, your goofy humor kind of reminds me of Uncle Mike. And I say, maybe it's not that goofy because he was pretty funny. And then my Uncle John, who passed away just recently, some people have said, boy, I see a gentleness in your smile. I see a little bit of John there. And I hear those things, and sometimes I get a little bit embarrassed, but I think more than anything, I get a little bit proud, a little bit thankful. Because in my DNA is the DNA of all of these wonderful people, and I am a part of them, And they are, in turn, a part of me. So that when people see me, they can see the good in my relatives. And and in that is something to be thankful for. This idea of resemblance, this big theological move by John, is something that is at the center of our gospel text today. John is making an incredible claim for the people of his church, and also for the people who have forever wanted to see the invisible God. He begins his gospel, if you remember, with this main thought. In chapter 1, he says, No one has ever seen God, but it is God the Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known to us. In other words, John's big claim is, yes, God the Father, God, invisible, immortal, ever wise, yet accessible and seen through this person, the very person, the very essence, the very DNA of God in this person of Jesus. Keep that in mind when you hear chapter 14 this morning, this beautiful chapter that we've heard at so many funerals and memorial services of loved ones, some of which happened in in this sanctuary. And these words of Jesus that are so incredibly comforting. And think what John wants to get across to the disciples who are terrified. They're terrified, they're worried, they're fearful. Because Jesus in chapter 13, after washing their feet, after eating dinner with them, tells them that he must go be handed over into the hands of sinners, be tried and and be killed upon a cross, and in three days rise again. And the disciples are saying, what are you talking about? You can't leave us? What does this mean? 
And Jesus shows God the Father to them in this incredible way. He says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God. Have faith in me. I'm preparing a place for you, and you know the way to the place I'm going. And Thomas, who's become my favorite disciple this year because he asks the questions that we all want to ask but are afraid to, he says, uh, Jesus, if you're going somewhere, we're going to need a map. And Jesus says, you're looking at him. You're looking at the way. You're looking at the truth that never fails. You're looking at the life that is eternal. I'll be with you. You won't be orphaned. When you see me, you'll see my Father. And Philip takes it another step further, right? He says, well, just show us the Father. We'll be satisfied. And Jesus says, do you not understand? Do you not understand that when you see me, you see my Father. And when you believe in me, the Spirit of God is within you, and you can do greater things than even I have. In other words, Jesus is saying something about resemblance, not just for himself, God the Father, but resemblance with us as the church. And this is so poignant for us today, that we who are made in the image and likeness of Almighty God, we who have that very Spirit of God within us and the gift of baptism, we who claim to be followers of Jesus, have the ability through our actions of love and compassion to show others Jesus. So when we study the Scriptures and we see Jesus and His compassion for others, we see God. And when we see Jesus and His sacrificial love upon a cross and His gift of resurrection for the whole world, we see God's sacrificial love. And, and yet it goes further because when we go out and we live, there's a good chance that others might see God within us. Brennan Manning is one of my favorite authors and preachers, and he told a story in the 1980s about five computer salesmen who were at a conference in Chicago. They were all from Milwaukee and had promised their wives that when the conference was over, they would be back home for dinner in time. The conference ran over a little bit, and they were taking the train back from Chicago to Milwaukee. When they got to the station, they saw their train was already starting to chug down the track, and they panicked. So they started to bustle throughout the train station and running, inadvertently ran over a table where on it lay a basket full of apples, and next to it a young boy who had a sign saying he was selling these apples for his books and clothes for school. The men breathed a sigh of relief when they were able to catch up to the conductor on the side of the train and get on in time. But one of the men had a little twinge, tinge of compassion and decided to turn back. In a time before cell phones, he told the men, call my wife, tell her I'll catch the next train, I'll be an hour and 45 minutes late. They all looked at him strangely and the train took off while the man turned back and he was glad that he did because when he was helping the little boy pick up the apples, he noticed that the boy was blind. And as he was picking up the apples, he saw some of them were bruised. In this movement of compassion, he took his wallet, pulled out a 20 and gave it to the boy saying, some of these are bruised. I hope, I hope that this will cover the apples. I hope we didn't ruin your day. And God bless you. And as he walked away, he heard the boy call to him, Sir, are you Jesus? Who is this Jesus that has such a magnetic effect on so many and is a stumbling block for others? Who is this Jesus but truly the very DNA of God? the very presence, embodiment of God for the sake of the world, the very one who shows us compassion and agape love and grace. And could it be, could it be that we today, through those 46 masks made in that one household this week, through that dinner shared for the neighbor that hasn't had a warm meal in a week, through that little example of two boys at home 
being creative and wanting to share love with their dad through acts of love out in the North area earlier in the week, through the ways in which we're connecting to one another through prayer and Zoom? Could it be through those acts where we put away our own selfish will, but we look out for the goodness and well-being of others? Could it be that others through that are able to ask the same question? Is that Jesus? The answer, of course, is yes. Through you, by the help of God, God's Spirit lives within you. And in that, through that, people are able to see Jesus. May it be so for us this week. May we look to Jesus and see God's love. May we trust that Jesus is working within us to be love for others, this day and always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. 
for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uplifted by the promise of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Build us up, mothering God, as living stones united in your spiritual house. Continually strengthen your church as it is sent forth to proclaim your love outside of these walls. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Align our ways to your love, O God. We pray for countries, leaders, and other organizations as they prepare places for those seeking refuge and safety and make decisions for the best interest of all of us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing and rest, help us Help those whose hearts are heavy and weighed down by many troubles. Comfort their suffering, ease their distress, and carry their burdens. Especially today, we pray for Yvonne Harris, Herb Smith, Charlotte Sachs, Margaret Blizzard, Barbara Berger, Thelma Adams, Debbie Frick, Tommy Roof, Jennifer Marsh, Diane Jenkins, Libby Robertson, Canty Nye, Carolyn West, Bob Taylor, Lois Taylor, Carol Bowers, Dwayne Fisk, Dot Cook, Tad Hunt, Chad Classen, Tom Blizzard, Ellie Wilson, Megs Rittenberry, Richard Adams, Martha Jutzler, Bernie Plord, Robert Sojourner, Helen Body, Lucille Rhodes, and Joyce Spann. And we pray for those that have no one to pray for them and those that we name silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, we pray for those who tend and teach young children, for the safe pregnancies or of expectant parents, and for families who struggle with infertility and miscarriage. We give thanks for all who have shown mothering care, and we remember all for whom this day is difficult. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Generous God, you call into your brilliant light all who have died. Give us faith to take hold of the promise of your eternal life. Today we especially pray for the family of Charlie Mathis. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory 
forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Thank you.